Awesome. Good evening. Praise the Lord tonight again. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to be in the presence of the, of the Lord and be in the house of the Lord. On top of that, hallelujah. That's the gift tonight. Um, how's everybody doing tonight? Wednesday, hump day. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. I just want you to rest a little bit and uh, swallow your heads right there. Get the stress out of you. Let, let your heart be subtle in the presence of the Lord. I know you had a hard day. We, we all try to get somewhere. We're trying to be about something and do some things in life. Let's just reverence the spirit of God tonight in this house. As all the men of God brings the word for us tonight, we have a special treat. Let's just bow our heads and, and receive the presence of God tonight. Father, we thank you, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus tonight. Lord, we just want to rest on your throne tonight, my God, and that you would uh, come down with your mighty power again in your loving kindness, my Lord. And Father, come to that every special place in our hearts, that, that secret place, my God, where you know where it's at, Father, that you will come and do great and miraculous work in our hearts tonight, Almighty God, that the heart will perceive, the eyes will see, the ears will hear, Lord. Heavenly Father, my spirit will be rekindled again in your fire. Father, we lift it all up to you this evening. We put our petition before the throne this evening. Father, we come to you with praise and worship, Lord, that we, your name be glorified, let your name be magnified today. Again, my Lord, you're worthy of all praise and all the honor. We bless our men of God, Father, tonight as he brings forward the word, Almighty God. Be with him, Father, put the anointing in his life again, Lord, that your word become powerful again to our lives and to our ears. And the truth, Father, shall, shall prevail, my Lord. We just thank you so much for loving us. Since the beginning of time, and you brought us here, Lord, in this time and age, Father, that you knew that we needed you, Almighty God. We didn't find you, but you found us, and we're thankful for that, my King. Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your spirit do what it has to do tonight, Father. Let us surrender. Let us be submissive to your spirit tonight. Heavenly Father, and hear the word of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And our dear Pastor Legend is going to bring us some praise and worship. Tonight, let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Well, thank the Lord. <coughs> Brother Doug Kent stopped by this afternoon and uh, <coughs> sent his greetings to all of you. Looking forward to the day when he can uh, enter the tabernacle without a mask, and then he'll do so. So he misses you, and also he dropped off some... Uh, Five copies of a, a uh, what shall I call it, classic missionary book. And if you're interested, you might see me about borrowing one of those copies. Uh, Sister Black, do you have a song you'd like to sing this evening? Yeah, Savior Like the Shepherd Lead Us. Okay. Savior Like the Shepherd Lead Us. Let's see. S-A. And we have a page number. 578. 
Sister Rhonda, do you have a song you'd like to sing this evening? 556. 556. 556. Till the storm passes by.
get no better than that. Our Lord Jesus has them in the palm of his hand. And none, none should grab us away. None. None can take us out of his hand. If God be with thee, who can be against thee? Somebody say amen. amen. Glory. If we're in the midst of a storm tonight, now is the time to pray. Now is the time to pray for each other. Now is the time to call on the mighty name of Jesus, the blessed assurance. Do we have any uh, prayer petitions tonight? Any special requests? Let's pray for our pastors, number one. Brother Steve. Absolutely. I said I was going to pray for our preacher tonight. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for each other. We're still in the storm. We're still in the storm. One of our evangelists came with COVID, and he's he's not getting better. Oh man! Praise Father, you hear our prayers. Brother Joel Smith, a good friend. Wow. Okay, brother Black. Our country, no matter what happens, God is still on the throne. Amen. Don't let that shake you. Let nothing shake you now. No matter what happens, we serve God Almighty. Brother Jacob? Um, to, to, I ask for myself, I, I've been blessed with uh, consistency as of late, and uh, I'm trying out new things as of late today to help me cope. And uh, I, I'm asking that God help me stay consistent with that. Amen. Amen. My son just came out of the Amen. Pray for our families, our dear, our dear closest sons and daughters, our moms and our relatives. Let's pray for the outside world that's lost, that the light shine upon them. Men that are coming in soon to this place of God, that, that they find the presence of God. Those that have left us, that the word that the seed is still in their heart is germinating, it's giving birth. They must be in a storm also, running away from the presence of God and, and other elements that are in their lives tonight. Let's pray for that. Let's show mercy where mercy has been given. Hallelujah. You know, and we're blessed. We're under the shadow of the Almighty here. No disease has touched us yet. Thank God for that. We can say amen. Amen to that. And God has mighty hands upon us. Thank you for the food being provided to this place. All the churches that support us, all the Christian folk who love God, who who give cheerfully and willingly to see us grow, to see us get somewhere with the Lord. Let's pray for our captains of each division, our managers. They're going through a hard time, too. They're in the storm, trying to keep things running, flowing. Let's pray for our kitchen. Let's have a good attitude in the mornings when we get there. Amen? This is our home. This is our home. Did I leave anything else out? The election. Sister? The election. The elections. Amen. Amen. Pray for Pastor Wooten, our, our, our senior pastor who's on vacation with his family, that he has a chance to connect and enjoy his presence with his family and, and, and be himself for a little while and, and still be the godly man that he is. Amen. Anybody else? Let's pray that we can wash the cars Saturdays. Don't forget about that. Wash the cars. Hallelujah. Let's stand up for prayer. Brother Dean? I just wanted to say, uh, Amen. I want to thank the guys who are stepping up a lot in the cafeteria. I want to thank you, man, coming up and just helping us. I know sometimes it gets kind of rough, and, and, and we have to show the outside world that we're walking in the light. That this is our home. This is our home, and this is real. Brother Steve, take us to the throne, sir. Lord God of heaven and earth, we praise you tonight and bless you, Father. Yes, Lord, I thank you that you're a God that cares and a God that listens and a God that answers prayers, Lord. Lord, you've heard all the requests made tonight, Lord God, and Lord, all the unspoken ones that people have needs on their heart, Lord God. We lift them up. We lift up our brother Joe Smith to you tonight, Lord God, that you would intervene in his life, Lord God. 
Oh, Father, you bring healing in your wings. Bring healing to him, Lord God. Deliver him from this COVID, Lord God. Oh, Father, that's nothing for you. We just ask that you go to him, Lord God. Oh, Lord, make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord God. Turn the, turn the COVID around in his life, Lord God. Bring him back to full health, Lord God. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory tonight for that, Lord God. Be with his family around him, Lord God. Protect them and help him to, to minister and care for him, Lord God. God, be in their home, Lord God, and comfort and take care of them with every need that they have tonight, Father God. Lord, we lift up the election to you, Lord God. Oh, Father God, you know all about it, every detail, Lord God. Lord God, that you would glorify yourself in it, Lord God. Oh, Father, all the men here that have problems, Lord God. Each one here has something. We all need something, Lord God. I lift up each man here to you, Lord God, each woman to you, Lord God. Oh, Father, oh, you know all about it. You know all about each detail of their lives and what they need. We lift up the needs tonight to you, Lord God. We lift up the needs. And for those that don't know you, Lord God, I ask that they would come to the saving knowledge of knowing you as Lord and Savior, Lord God. And Father, I ask that you break the addictions, Lord God, and deliver each man here out of what's holding and binding him, Lord God. Destroy the works of the enemy in each life here, Lord God. I ask Ask you, Lord God, there's nothing for you, Lord God, to deliver, Lord God, heal, save, Lord God, that you're in the business of that, Lord God, and that your will, Lord God, and Lord God, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory tonight, in your precious name, God, amen. Touch their lives and their hearts in a powerful mighty way, Father, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Our ushers. Brother Black, in prayer. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you. Another praise me in the house of the Lord. Yes. Thank you for the uh, good songs we've had, Lord. Thank you for the good uh, season of prayer. Yes. We have to bless this offering for his tender use. We have Brother Steve, as you bring us a message tonight, Lord. Help us each one and every one of us, Lord. Open our hearts and ears to the word of what you have for us. We ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for giving. Let's sing one more worship song. Hallelujah.
All right, Sister Ledger, do you have a song tonight? <laughs> 208. 208. Two hundred and eight. Maybe you can play it through one time for us, okay?
That was a beautiful song. Praise the Lord. I want to be like Jesus. Praise God. Let's get our hearts ready tonight. Let's receive the man of God as it brings forward the word. Hallelujah. Brother Steve. Thank you, sir. Well, good evening, everybody. I tell you, it's like every time I come up here, I know I say I'm nervous, but it's surprising to me. I'm not as nervous up here right now as I am during Sunday school. And I don't, I don't understand that. Um, I hope that I, I do a good job up here tonight. I hope uh, God's given me, God's given me some uh, deep thought on this, and I, I made some notes, and I have some Bible verses, and and I, I'm gonna do my best to to talk about it in a way that, that everybody can be interested in it and, and understand it. Can you hear me, Julian? I did. I'm just asking if you can hear me. <laughs> uh, I didn't want the, that little microphone thing, so he told me to bring this up close so I, everybody could hear me. Um, I thought about this for the last last time I did this, came up here, I, I spent about a week on what I wanted to talk about, and this time I had a bunch of stuff going on back in the clothing room, and I kept putting it off, and I didn't even think about anything until yesterday, and uh, then I just, I prayed and asked God to help me, give me something, and uh, he gave me an idea of something that, that I talked about in, in um, devotions the other day when Reverend Ledger had to go to the doctor and asked me to come in and, and do devotions, and, and I touched on it. And so anyway, I guess I'm mumbling. What, what the two things that I want to talk about tonight is, is honesty and uh, ties. And God help me, help me with, with putting it together a little bit. Um, as everybody that was here in, in devotions the other morning, I, I read something from the book uh, from Mr. Tozer, and sorry that you guys have to hear it again, but for everybody that wasn't here, it was uh, a, a guy, a doctor named Dr. Schumann said to Mr. Tozer, said that he believed that there was one quality that God required a man to have before he would save him. And I asked everybody if they knew what it was. When I was reading it, I, you know, I thought about it before I, I looked at it. And um, if, if you guessed it, it's honesty. And it's something that we, you know, we talked about in Sunday school the other day too, uh, Sunday. And uh, when I start when I start looking at the Bible and reading through it and, and following the, the references, uh, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper with it, and, and I just it overwhelms me sometimes, but then it hits me, like I've said several times, of, of how important it is to come from the heart, and sometimes I don't even know I don't even know what's in my heart. And uh, that's something that I was, I was going to bring up tonight too. Um, first of all, I want to. I did want you. Don't have to stand up. I'm going to read um, Psalm 14. Psalms 14, one through three. Okay, Psalm 14, one. The fool has said in his heart. There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. There are, they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. 
And then I'm going to skip down to Psalm 15, 1 and 2. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He hath walketh uprightly and worketh righteous, righteousness and speaketh, speaketh the truth in his heart. Dear Lord, thank you for, for bringing us all here tonight to hear your word. I, I thank you for giving me the privilege to do it. Uh, I ask for your help. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, the insincere man has no claim on mercy. For such a man, the cross provides no remedy. When I, I read that, I, I, I started thinking deep down in my heart how many times I, I lie to myself. And I lie to myself almost every day uh, about some, some things that, that really don't matter except for the lying part. <laughs> um, but I had to start asking God to, to show me what, what I was doing. I didn't even know what I was doing, what I was thinking, what I was saying. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to be honest all the time. And the Bible, the Bible says that, that it's hard to do, but, but you know, we have to do it. Um, Christ can and will save a man who has been dishonest, but he cannot save him while he is dishonest. Absolute candor is a requirement for salvation. This is something that, that I read in, in this book. It, it's kind of, I talked to somebody, I don't remember who, and I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to do this up here and being totally honest with myself and being honest with you guys too. And, and you, um, it's hard, it, it's hard to do, <laughs> it, it, it really is, um, especially when I'm trying to talk to you about it. I got to, I got to catch myself and make sure that I don't, I don't plan on lying to anybody, but just like I said the other day, there's all, there's different kinds of, there's different kinds of honesty. There's there, that honesty, like, like the, the example that I used about, and I only use that because I used to hear it all the time being in the restaurant business, but, you know, telling your wife that, you know, you just stopped by the bar and had a couple of drinks with, the, with your buddies and watched part of the game. That's why you were two, two, hours, two or three hours late from work. No big deal, nothing said, but, you know, you didn't tell her that you ran into your ex-girlfriend and went out in the parking lot and wound up going home with her for a little while, and you didn't tell her that, so that's, you know, People argue all the time, well, I didn't lie. Well, that's, you know, that's being dishonest. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a dishonesty that, that even now, even, even when you're trying real hard not to, not to be dishonest, you can still fall into that, or I can uh, fall into that and not even mean to, just out of habit or, and just not because maybe I just didn't even want to explain something. But anyway, um, but this, this saying, the guy said it in this book a little bit different. We've heard it, we all heard mean what you say and say what you mean or say what you mean and mean what you say, but he had a different twist on it that, that makes it make, make more sense to me. But he said, mean what you say and never say what you do not mean, either to God or to man. Um, the... Um, one of the one of the things around here, I don't, and I'm being totally honest. I don't remember who it was. Uh, I I tried. I even tried to remember uh, to make sure that if I did, that I wasn't going to be dishonest up here. If that makes sense. Don't remember who said it, but when one of the new guys came in and he was talking about some of the rules back in the clothing room, 
And he said the, the new person asked, uh, and I don't remember who the new person was or who the guy that was, he was asking, but said, what's this thing about not buying anything on Sunday? And the guy said, well, you can't, the rule is you can't bring anything back here. So whatever you, you know, you go out and buy something, just make sure you don't bring it back here. And, you know, I thought to myself, well, that, yeah, that ain't the point, you know, and that's kind of being dishonest. That's, that, you know, that's one of those things. It's straight up, that's wrong. It's being dishonest. But I used to say that too with new people when they came in. I used to do the same, say the same thing. And when I smoked, there were times that, um, you know, I left on a Sunday and went and got a pack of cigarettes. I'm not going to lie, but I don't, I haven't done anything like that. Well, anyway, um, this is not about all of that. Uh, it's just different. This is <laughs> strictly about just different kinds of being dishonest. Um, drinking one or two. You know, I was, I'm sure some of you were too, but I was the king of, uh, I've just had two. Uh, I'm just... When being being pulled over, no, I just had two. I only had a couple of beers. Yeah, I've never had just a couple of beers. Um, accountability, you know, when when accountability, when you pay accountability, uh, if you just go out and work one job or you know one day, are you honest about how much you pay? Um, and I'm, you know. I'm not judging anybody on that, but I know that kind of stuff happens. Most of this stuff I've done, and you know, um, but the Lord, the, the Lord wants us to know, you know, He wants us to know that that's that's not how He wants us to be, and that's not how we should be. And when you're when you're practicing not doing that, being that way, and I still do some of this stuff that I'm talking about now, I still do it by mistake and, and not even paying attention. I'm trying, and when, I, when I'm trying, I feel better. I feel better about myself that I'm trying, even when I mess up. So um, it's, it's something that, that you just ought to think about. Um, and then, you know, Reverend Wooten, Reverend Wooten's been on this, this little, man, I hate, you know, war path almost <laughs> about uh, checking in and out on where you're going and where where you, where you, you know there's another one so some of that I think some of that we just forget and and whatever but um, that's think about that um, and these these are some things that I'm I'm guilty about and uh, praying for someone uh, praying for somebody and and doing it and like Reverend Wooten when he left or I guess it was Tuesday Monday night Monday night whenever it was uh, I told him bye and and uh, I said I'll be praying for you and as I walked off I'm like are you will you really pray for him and I made it a point this morning that he was the first person I prayed for just to make sure that I did and and I did, and I felt good about it, and and I had a, I wound up talking to the Lord for a little while about uh, what He may be going through with with family and and uh, his wife passing away. You know, it's been a couple of years now, but still, he doesn't. He's like most of us; we don't spend a lot of time with our families. So he's going to be up there with his his family and grandchildren, and and you know, that's just. Uh, that's a lot for us all. Um, and praying for our enemies. Um, the, the word enemies kind of throws me off sometimes because I don't think I, I, may, I may have some enemies, but I don't know of any real enemies that I have. So, but there's a lot of people that, that get on my nerves. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure, and you know, I'm sure there's a lot of, lot of I'm, I'm sure I get on a lot of you guys' nerves. I know on Thursday night sometimes I probably get on everybody's nerves. But um, I can forgive. I, I think I've forgiven. I've asked God to help me if there was somebody that I haven't forgiven in my past to help me, and he did. 
you wouldn't believe how much you can you can ask him and he will help you if you if he knows you're serious I've, I've learned that and I'm I'm still excited about that because if that's how I know that I'm being honest with myself is when I ask him for it and he gives it to me it gives me somebody I mean somebody that I haven't thought about in years I forgot this person existed and he he reminded me of something and I'm like Wow. Anyway, um, but praying for your enemies, uh, praying for people that you just don't get along with, or praying somebody that, praying some for somebody that told Reverend Ledger about something that you did that you didn't do. Um, you know, you can forgive them. I don't know. I really don't know. You have to talk to the, one of the preachers or talk to God about it. I don't know what he says about you know not really liking them that much, but. Uh, you got to love them, and I think you can love them. I, w I was in love with a girl I didn't like. I was married to her for a while. So I think it's okay to, you know, I think that's okay, but you'll have to, <laughs> you'll have to figure that out on your, on your own. Um, but I can, still, I can still pray for people, it, and it's easy. But um, you got to do it. You, you got to do it. Um, oh yeah, and what was what was really cool? <laughs> I, I, I think it's funny. Um, when I was talking, I was thinking, praying about praying for enemies. I happened to write down as you know. You wonder. I ask myself, why? Why do I have to pray for them? It says because God loves them. You know, God God loves everybody. God loves them. And you know, if I got if I'm upset with with whoever and and I'm having a hard time saying, Well man, he's wrong. He was just wrong. And he's wrong, there's no doubt about it. Just straight up. There's all the evidence is he was wrong. But I'm gonna forgive him anyway. I'm not gonna hold a grudge. I'm just gonna let it go because that's what God wants me to do. God that ain't e I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying that's the way it's supposed to be. And I, I don't really have as big of a problem with that anymore as I, as I used to. But, you know, God loves him. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, there's got to be something. There's got to be God loves everybody. There's got to be something in here in the Bible about that. What, so I look at my new Bible and, I'm, and the topics. And anyway, yada, 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 I guess you already figured it out. Now I came to... It told me to go to this book and this verse, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> you're such an idiot. Uh, and I'll just, I just, I won't even go to it. I'll just tell you the first per part of it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> it's like, duh, right there it is. So, yeah, God, God loves your enemies, and so you better, you better pray for them. That's, that's the best idea. Um, and then I ask myself, why is it hard? Why is it so hard to pray for so-and-so? So that that's when it gets gets me in trouble. So then uh, he he tied it all up together with with ties, and and I guess because I'm guilty about ties too. I I first started when I first got here, I started giving money. Uh, on my ties and it seemed like and I'm no joke it seemed like I had more money than I've ever had in my life <laughs> uh, when I was tithing and and I, I did that for a while for a long while and then I got in a bind and and you know for whatever I, I had gotten a bind and needed to pay off some stuff that I'd forgotten about and I stopped and uh, I stopped for a while and I noticed it I noticed it, and it's it's no joke. Uh, so, um, real real quick, I don't want to keep everybody too long. Um, I I started looking around and, at ties and seeing what what all the Bible did have to say about it, and it got actually it got kind of confusing in some parts. Um, but there's some real some real good stuff that I that I learned um, 
first of all, J Jerome every once in a while talks about uh, tithing about 10% and giving 10% of your day. And 10% of your day is, is, is uh, 2.4 hours, which equals out to two hours and, and 20 minutes. That's what 2.4 is, two hours and 20 minutes. And um, I got to think about it, and this is for my own satisfaction. I'm not, I'm not criticizing anybody. This has nothing to do with anybody else, but it just hit me. I read one time, and then I looked it up, too. It takes, it takes about between six and eight minutes to smoke a cigarette. And so I figured seven minutes. It takes seven minutes. I used to time it. and I smoked the 100s, and it took about eight minutes, but... You know, give or take seven minutes it takes to smoke a cigarette. And most people, I, I smoke a pack a day, and there's 20 packs and, or 20 cigarettes in a pack. And you multiply that, and you come up with 140 minutes, which is two hours and 20 minutes. So I thought about that, and I'm like, you know, um, when I, I think when Jerome's saying that up up here and saying, well, two hours and 40 minutes, he wants two hours and 40 minutes of every, or two hours and 20 minutes of every day. Man, that's, I don't know how I can fit two hours and 20 minutes in every day to give to God. Uh, I figured out how, I figured out how to do that with cigarettes. And, you know, and I, and I thought about it, yeah, well, I used to smoke when I drive. Well, I can talk to God when I drive, you know. Um, so that that made me that that spoke to me today. Um, the ties, and according to the Bible, the ties the ties aren't just really just for God. I mean, they're, they're not for God alone. They're for us too. Um, there, if if you didn't if you didn't come to church, you wouldn't tithe. So and and this this is kind of this is kind of hard talking to you guys and and me because we're we have to be here. Uh, this would kind of be a little bit different if if you didn't have to be here. But if you know if if we didn't have to be here, there'd probably just be a couple of us here. So if the whole the whole point to or not the whole point, but a big a big thing about tithing is is to come to church you you got to come to church to to give the money and you should be going to church and the whole thing about going to church is being around other people that's going to church and to being around the kind of people that that go to church and i know that sounds kind of redundant but it, that's what it's that's what going to church is that's what a big part of it is. You're, we're all supposed to help each other out. We're supposed to be around other people. Uh, you know, if the, again, if this was, if we were all here because we wanted to be, and we all left and went to our own homes, and we were just, you know, didn't have to be here, um, or just being around each other, knowing each other, sharing the same thing, you know, it, hearing hearing God's word. You come to church, you actually hear God's word. You're hearing me talk a lot tonight, but I have read from the Bible. Um, so you hear God's word that you wouldn't have heard if you weren't here. Um, you hear music. We hear the hymnals. The hymnals are, have got God's words written all over them. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, the piano. Listen to the piano. It's amazing to me how guitars and and pianos and music instruments they all they've always amazed me um, how they work <laughs> and how somebody came up with it and uh, you know you just hear stuff and it, you remind it it reminds you of God or it does me hearing hearing especially you know Dave played the other night my, my one of my favorite hymnals uh, just a closer walk with thee and he played it without us singing it, and he played it slow and just really, I mean, he did a great job with it. It's a beautiful song, but the piano is just amazing, and you don't get that if you're not in church. So, um, I'm not even using much of these. Uh, and, you know, uh, I used to use the excuse 
not to go to church because the church and I and my friends my friends used to say even one of the friends before I came here used to say that they don't go to church because they all they want is money that's all they talk about they want the money 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 just money money um, that was being I was being dishonest then I've never been to a church that that's all they talked about there was some that that were a little bit more you know blunt about it than others but um, but it's not here. So if that, what what is re excuse? And I, I'm not going to tarry on that. But you know, what is the excuse? People don't go to church. I mean, just people that believe in God and people that that give to charity. And you know, if they don't go to church, why don't they? And and when they when they tell somebody, if somebody asks them, you know, what did they tell them? I, they're probably not honest. I never was. Um, but Hebrews, I'm going to go to uh, real quick. I wanted to go to Hebrews chapter 10. And I probably, I've said this before. I Six or eight months ago, I got into a deep discussion with a friend of mine not that doesn't let he's up in Tennessee and we got into Hebrews and I didn't know a whole lot about Hebrews I still don't know a whole lot except for it's really deep and it's above my pay grade um, if you really get into Hebrews man there's some there's some really good stuff in there um, but I'm gonna read it real quick uh, just two verses uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. And... What that's saying is, um, and, you know, everybody, I, I'm one of those people that I believe that, that Paul wrote Hebrews. But, you know, it's nobody, they say nobody knows who it is. But um, I believe there's, anyway, I believe it was Paul. And what I, I think Paul was saying was, uh, and I, I wrote this down because I, I, I had a hard time trying to explain it, and I threw away several pieces of paper. And so I'm just going to read it straight off. And I think what he was saying, he was pointing out that the members of, the, of our church have an obligation to one another. We are to provoke each other to good works and deeds and to exhort, strongly encourage one another to live consistent lives worthy of God and that's you know that's something that's kind of well it's new to me I'll just I'll just be honest here um, growing up going to church I you know you just go to church go to church my my dad used to take the whole family and uh, then when I him and my mom got divorced he quit going uh, and his he got remarried still married today and uh, she goes to church and he doesn't but he you know that anyway um, going to church to me I never under really understood it and until you know really until today I didn't really understand how the depth of it just like the depth of everything else the depth of of being honest and the depth of of knowing God and and you know the the depth of of being part of a church. Some sometimes it's hard, but um, anyway, I'm trying not to be boring here. <laughs> uh, it's just that's the depth of it. it. It's more than it's more than just coming to church. It's more than just doing it because you're supposed to uh, you do it. Do it whether you even in the days that you have a hard time doing it or have other things to do or, or whatever. Um, it's, it's important. 
It's important. I, I would like to think that if I left tomorrow that I would still go to church. I, you know, I, I can sit here, I can stand up here and tell everybody, you know, that, well, yeah, I would. But to be honest, you know, who knows what? Whoever, who knows whatever's going to happen? I want to be, I want to be more than anything else I've ever wanted right now. I want to be that Christian that, that I, that I think I'm trying to be, if that makes sense. I really do want to be that. Uh, I'm 56 years old. Um, I believed in God all my life that, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to turn this into talking about me, but that I really want to be that. I, I really do. So, um, it is, it's the will of Christ, you know, it's, it's the, the will of Christ, and, and I can't remember, I want to go to real quick before we, you know, um, Deuteronomy 14, I, w- I want to read that real quick. Deuteronomy 14, verses 22 and 23. 22 says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of corn, thy wine, and thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, of thy flocks, that thou may, mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And the reason it was important for me to read that was because uh, we talked about that this morning, about fear in the Lord. Uh, we talked about that, that in devotions. And I, I looked at this verse, and I, I looked at the references and followed along, and, you know, the little reference beside it says the fear uh, what it meant there was to be in awe of God. And um, that's that. Yep. And it's time to go, and that's probably all I need to say. Uh, I, <laughs> I appreciate everybody listening to me and bearing with me. I, I tried to... Um, I tried to be as honest as I I could, and I appreciate you all being here even though you had to. (laughs) Let's stand for prayer. Reverend Ledger, would you dismiss us, please? Amen. Yeah. Yeah.